A triple shooting suspect is caught during a dangerous chase after leaving two police officers wounded. I'm Hannah Dobo with the latest on the investigation. And closer to home, City of Bozeman walking away from a deal to build a joint law and justice facility with Gallatin County. Coming up, find out what that means for local law enforcement and for local taxpayers. Good morning to you. Welcome to your Wednesday. Current time, 6.30. Our top story for you now. A man is in custody this morning, suspected of shooting two Dallas police officers and a Home Depot employee. Armando Luis Juarez was captured uh, late last night after an hours-long mine hunt across the city. CBS's Hannah Doba has the latest this morning. We got our man. Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings expressed relief following the arrest of Ramondo Luis Juarez. I want to thank our Dallas police tonight. Uh, they have taken a punch and they've come out fighting. Police say 29 year old Juarez was being escorted out of a Home Depot in northern Dallas Tuesday afternoon when he opened fire, shooting two police officers and a store security guard. A source told a CBS affiliate in Dallas that a male police officer was shot in the back of the head and a female officer was shot in the face. I seen two officers down, like surrounded in puddle of blood. Investigators say Juarez escaped in a white pickup truck, prompting a citywide manhunt that ended nearly six hours later. They observed a vehicle fitting the description of the wanted vehicle. They pursued this individual through the area of northwest Dallas, where they apprehended him. A female passenger was arrested along with Juarez. He's facing multiple counts, a warrant for multiple counts of aggravated assault on a police officer. He had an outstanding warrant on felony theft as well. All three shooting victims underwent surgery last night and remain hospitalized. Hanadoba, CBS News, New York. And we're told no other details being released about the victim's conditions at this point. It's unclear who Juarez's passenger was or what charges she may now be facing as well. So most uh, information coming up at 7 uh, o'clock on CBS story. this morning. Yeah, terrifying actually. Hi. Uh, not so terrifying looking at the weather going up, up and up and up today. Yeah, today, tomorrow and Friday, eventually toward the weekend, we'll start to see things slide a little bit, but man, it's still not bad overall. Temperatures this morning a little crisp. 12 degrees in West Yellowstone this Ooh. morning, 29 in Belgrade, 25 in Butte. We do have some 30s, even some 40s showing up uh, for the early morning, but we're basically dealing with some high thin clouds. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise. Uh, snap a photo. We'd love to share that on air. Temperatures back into the 60s for the afternoon. Let's we'll see about what that means for the weekend. We'll talk more about that from the Villain Auto Weather Patio coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Just ahead of 633 now on this Wednesday. Uh, the FBI has joined the search for a missing woman last seen in Bozeman. Danielle Diamond was last seen at the Bozeman Public Library back on November 27th of last year. Anyone with information is asked to contact the FBI Salt Lake City field office. That number, 801-579-6187. Gallatin County Sheriff's Office also still attempting to locate Diamond. Public can contact the detective division there, 406-582-2121, if you have any information. And a 62-year-old Butte man was sentenced on Tuesday for taking a video of a young girl in the shower. William Patrick Shea was sentenced to 25 years in prison with 20 years suspended for secretly taking a video of the 11 year old girl at a Butte residence in March of 2017. District Judge Brad Newman credited Shea for 391, 391 days of served jail time. Also Monday night, the uh, city of Bozeman decided to not work with Gallatin County on a combined law enforcement center. MTN's Madaris Babb tells us how the county is reacting. In some ways it's disappointing. I've worked for three years with the city to try to get something, but in those three years, and especially in the last few days, I've realized that uh, I don't think the city and county would be a very good marriage to do a, a big project like that, so. Gallatin County Commissioner Joe Skinner is talking about the city's decision last night to move forward with a Bozeman public safety facility instead of a joint law enforcement center. The county sheriff's office and Bozeman police are currently located right behind me in the Law and Justice Center. This will change if the public safety facility is approved by Bozeman voters. The public safety building the city hopes to build would house police, fire and municipal courts under one roof. This would place the city and county law enforcement in different buildings. 
the worst thing in this whole thing is separating law enforcement. Um, but there's a lot of other things to consider, and I think from hearing from the sheriff and the, and the chief, I think that's a doable situation to, to live in, you know, separate facilities. Chief of Police Steve Crawford says police do work with the sheriff on a regular basis. I'll be quite candid that if the only problem facing the city was, was a police facility problem, then I think the shared law enforcement facility is the solution for that problem. But that's not the only problem facing the city. Crawford says both projects created a solution for his department. In Bozeman, Medeiros Bab, MTN News. Now, Medeiros tells us public safety facility will cost around $40 million. That means the average taxpayer would pay around $146 each year. And health officials hope that Montana Tech students can take some time to learn about the danger of sexually transmitted diseases. In conjunction with STD Awareness Month, the Butte Health Department gave free sexual transmitted disease tests to Montana Tech students in Butte yesterday. The annual event is designed to give students quick test results and to better educate them on how to stay safe and protect against STDs. And uh, we do this every year at Tech just to help ensure the safety of our kids um, that go to school here um, and make sure that they know and, oh, and they are aware of their status. Now Smith adds that most STDs show few symptoms early on, so it's important to get students tested. Well, one of the biggest issues in Montana's congressional campaigns this year is health care. The candidates have very different views on that subject, even within their own party. In the first of a two-part series, MTN's Mike Dennison looks at how the Republican U.S. Senate candidates want to reform health care. Four men are vying for the Republican nomination to challenge Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester, and one of them is a surgeon, State Senator Al Oshesky of Kalispell. He says health care is the main reason he got into the race a year ago. Oshesky wants to ditch the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, which he says has accelerated mass consolidation within the health care industry. It's destroyed your small business physician and provider, so they are no longer uh, in practice where you are their boss. Now your doctor um, and soon your dentist and your optometrist are going to be employed by hospitals. And guess what? They no longer work for you, they work for the hospital. Olszewski wants to peel back burdensome regulations on health care providers, stop drug companies from overcharging, and move toward more of a free market system where the customer has more power. Former State District Judge Russ Fagg of Billings also says Obamacare needs to go because it's too costly and that we need more consumer choice and competition. Yet Fagg says some sort of basic health care should be available to everyone. Everybody deserves a little bit of health care, some basic maintenance type of a health care system. But the path that we are on with the Affordable Care Act is just simply unsustainable. Matt Rosendale, a state insurance commissioner, says he's been working directly to create lower cost health insurance options and examine drug costs. Options in the works include businesses banding together to form insurance pools, and short-term health plans that don't have to meet Obamacare mandates. We're going to see many more products and services that will be available in 19 that were available in 18 and, and continue to help offer options that allow people to accommodate their health care needs. Big Sky businessman Troy Downing says he wants to focus on the cost of the system and then talk about coverage. He says drug companies should not be allowed to charge Americans many times more than they charge citizens in other countries and that more light should be shed on hospital charges. What business do you go to where you don't have some expectation of what it's gonna what it's gonna cost to get something done? I think that we need to have transparency there and I think we need to insist upon it. Republican voters will choose one of these candidates in the June 5th primary. Tomorrow, how is health care defining another primary contest? The five Democrats who want to challenge Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. By the way, absentee ballots for the primary election will be mailed out on May 11th. And don't forget, MTN News will host the Montana Broadcaster Senate debate on kbzk.com. That's coming up on Thursday. For more details, visit us online or check out our app. It is time for a quick break here on your Wednesday morning. When Montana This Morning returns, we head to the Children's Museum here in Bozeman. There's a brand new exhibit featuring creepy crawlies, and we've got a preview. Also, some information about a big fundraiser on Friday nights. But first, here's a preview of what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning.
Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. President Trump sends mixed messages about embattled VA Secretary nominee Ronnie Jackson. We'll take a closer look at the allegations against him. And we'll take you inside a sensory deprivation tank for our series, Pay Attention, How the Therapy Directly Impacts Mind and Body. See you at 7.